Week, all three female Supreme Court justices have been on the losing end of a decision involving contraception facing off against an all-male majority. The court weighed in yet again on Obamacare's contraceptive coverage requirement, which comes on the heels of that big Hobby Lobby case on Monday. This time, it was an emergency injunction for Wheaton College. This is a Christian college. And it says that the school doesn't even have to sign the waiver that would give a third party the ability to provide coverage for contraception. Uh, Republican strategist Kevin uh, Madden and Democratic strategist Janice Fuentes are staying with us on this. Sarah Hashimaris in the Los Angeles Times newsroom. President Obama is asking Congress for $3.7 billion in emergency funds to respond to the influx of immigrants who have flooded the southwestern border in recent months. The Times reports that nearly half the money would go to the Department of Health and Human Services for food, housing and medical care for the tens of thousands of youngsters arriving at the border. The money would also bolster border security, speed up the processing of immigrant arrivals and help Central American countries stem the tide of migrants heading north. 
The spending plan is nearly double the $2 billion the White House initially said was the minimum amount it would ask for, and it's certain to meet opposition in Congress. An estimated 52,000 children have crossed the border since October. Well, Michael, the protesters behind me have been waiting all day and night for those buses to arrive. Border Patrol agents won't confirm, but we've been told, or we're hearing rather, that those buses were diverted to a facility in San Ysidro. This follows a day of harsh words and even arrests over how to handle the nation's immigration crisis. We love the kids, and we're here to support. As soon as she secure the borders, I think everybody would be happy. Demonstrators on both sides of the immigration debate stood behind barriers outside the Border Patrol station set up by police to be sure if buses arrived, they would get through. Class erupted between the two opposing groups. There was two or three on the top cops back fighting with the cops. She burnt and ripped up an American flag and we ripped this off her pole. The brawl started after a woman shredded American flags on the Border Patrol fence. She admitted to us she was proud of it. The American flag now symbolizes imperialism throughout the entire world and they can ask me all they want about the torn up flags and I'm not ashamed of it. These people are here illegally. They were let in illegally. I feel sorry for the, for the kids, the sick kids and all that. Treat them and send them back home. This information is from NowTheEndBegins.com. Obama set to declare martial law in Texas to stop illegal immigrant protesters. Oh my goodness. Texas is a tinderbox on the edge of all-out thermal nuclear war because of Obama's intense campaign of dumping thousands of illegal aliens in border towns. Peaceful citizens and militias have risen up to stop the dumping. Obama does not like this and he is sending in federal storm troopers in full riot gear to end the protests. Welcome to Americanistan. Jeremy Oliver, a resident of Temecula, California, a town that neighbors Murrieta, told Breibart, Texas, that local police officers warned the protesters that it's going to get ugly. Here we go, people. Oliver said the feds are mad that they haven't been able to use this facility. Officers out there warn the people that federal agents will be in Marietta on Monday. They are going to get the next bus through no matter what. Riot gear and shields will be used to push the crowd back. John Henry, a Marietta resident since 1991, was told the same thing by local officers. We're being told that federal marshals, or ICE, will be here in the next few days and that they are bringing riot gear, Henry said. They're apparently going to be blocking off the street with concrete blockades so that no vehicles can get through. The River County Sheriff's Department showed up last night and brought a huge watchtower that shoots up into the air 35 feet. On Friday, six protesters were arrested in Marietta. One was apprehended for crossing the yellow tape that blocked protesters from the Border Patrol Station's entrance. This is according to USA Today looks like we have a horrible mess at the border and this could very well start a civil war. We urge you to call tomorrow. Call tomorrow. Llamen mañana al presidente que no quite esa ley que ayuda a nuestros hijos y nuestras familias a ser refugiados que han venido aquí por causa de violencia, por causa de guerras del pasado y por causa de pobreza. The laboratory Ian Burkhart sat in was crowded and small, but what he did there was enormous. 
should. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. In a breathtaking demonstration, the 23-year-old became the first patient ever to move a paralyzed hand by using his own thoughts. At times, his doctors struggled to find words to put this moment into context. Where we are now, to me, is still staggering in, in its implications. But for Ian, all of this is really all about the simplicities of life. Picking up a cup of water and drinking it, or brushing your teeth, or feeding yourself, you know, those things, if you can do those on your own, makes a big difference in your life. To get to this point took teamwork from dozens of experts and a groundbreaking surgery just over two months ago. Surgery was an important part in terms of being able to precisely put this microchip in the area that controls the arm and the hand movements. The team at Ohio State worked with engineers from Battelle who developed software and algorithms as well as this high-tech sleeve. Known as NeuroBridge technology, the system reads Ian's thoughts, processes them, and in less than a tenth of a second, sends signals to his hand to move.